Welcome back to the Missing Link podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. We have a very special guest today, Matthew Embry. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much for doing this and helping bring exposure to what we're doing. Of course, yeah. So for those of you that don't know, Matthew Embry is an award-winning documentary filmmaker and advocate for patients with multiple sclerosis. His recent feature documentary, Living Proof, which is available globally on Amazon Prime, premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival and has sold out in theaters in multiple countries. Matthew Embry was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1995, and his documentary, Living Proof, is an autobiographical story demonstrating why more than 25 years after his diagnosis, he is symptom-free and living an incredible life. And I follow you, I think, on all social media platforms, and you're just so motivating. I love everything that you share, and you, you're just so authentic with everything that you share. Oh, thank you. I, I try my best to... To show people what's at, what, what it's really like to live this way, right? Yeah, the good days, the bad days, and everything in between. Yeah, exactly. So before we get into it, what is something that someone might not know about you from the online world? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I'm quite into, and again, uh, and I give a lot of time and attention to is the, the concept of computer simulation reality. Uh, that, you know, I know that sounds pretty out there, but um, it's, it's something that, you know, I give a lot of time and thought to, and I actually implement some of the, the ideas and principles into my day-to-day -day life, um, you know, and to, 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 to live that way. So again, I encourage people, if you're interested at all, like a computer simulated reality, it might be really beneficial to you and for some it might just be something that you might not want to even go down <laughs> <laughs> awesome that's cool thank you for sharing that so i'm not even quite sure exactly where to start because i have so many questions for you but let's start with ms hope because that's something i've looked into i know a lot about it but for our listeners can you explain first of all what it is and how it came about Sure. I mean, MS Hope is, is a free resource for people all over the world. And what it is, is I try to share the scientific based strategies that I use to control my multiple sclerosis. And I try to create it, we try to create the team in the most easy way and accessible for people to understand. So it's got, it's, it's video driven, so you can watch it and see things in action. Uh, there's downloadable PDFs. And there's a free cookbook you can order and links to a free, doc, a free on Amazon Prime. You have to have an Amazon Prime membership. You can sign up for a free one um, to, to watch the documentary. And it came about um, as an outreach mission. Um, it came about, it, it, its goal was to reach people all over the world um, with information that we didn't feel was being shared by, by MS societies and that you weren't necessarily going to get from your neurologist. Um, and that was his intent. And, you know, that was back in 2014, 2015. And here we are seven, six, seven years later. And, and we have reached people all over the world. Yeah, I feel like it's so well known now. So that is just truly amazing. And when did you, so I know you've had MS uh, for more than 25 years. When did mm -hmm. you start implementing these things that you've learned? Yeah, I mean, I stood luck. I was very blessed. Uh, my dad's a research scientist, and my mother was a nurse. Um, and so I implemented the diet exercise program, you know, within six weeks of my diagnosis. Uh, for me, it was like a light bulb moment. It just, uh, it resonated that I could be in control of my health. And I, I, I put the work in right away. Um, and I just didn't look back. Um, so that's kind of the journey. I mean, that's over 26 years ago now. Um, but you know, I, I'm the living proof of what happens when you when you eat the way I do and you exercise and live the way I do. Yes. And for anyone who hasn't watched that documentary yet, I would highly, highly recommend it. Can you give us an example of let's let's first start with the fitness side of things. What sure. what does your fitness life look like? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really it's daily. It's a daily it's a daily fitness journey. Um and at different, different levels, right? I mean, before I did this interview and thank you, you adjusted, I was able to, you know, hit the gym, run five miles and, and do weights uh, and do a sauna or a steam. 
And that's, you know, it's before I even do this. And I think that's, it's, it's a matter for me of, of doing it almost every single day. I mean, there is the odd day throughout the year that I miss but very, very rarely. Um, and also too, I tell people it's not, it's, it's, it's not that structured in regards to it's the same time every day. It's just not, I mean, I don't know how people can do that. If you've got kids and a family, you've got to adjust. Um, sometimes it's two times a day, you know, I'll, that's just, as I've gotten older, I've realized that I feel better if I do that. Uh, but it's definitely, a, it's a daily discipline. And the one thing I do talk about, it's when it's some, when, uh, when it becomes a must, you make time for it. And I think that's how I approach it. It's a must. It's not, it's not an option. And I think if you check my Instagram account, you'll see things like me at four in the morning or you know, one time I remember doing the elliptical at like one thirty in the morning and it's just, you, you do it and you make time for it. And it's amazing how the world will shift around you to, to facilitate that. Yeah. And so do you ever think, do you have specific programs for certain days? Like, do you have an upper body day, a lower body day, a cardio day where you focus more on one thing or each day and each workout? Is it just a mix of all of it? Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I try my best to balance it. What you're saying. I try my best, like one day, a big run the next day, you know, elliptical, however. Um, but again, I really listen to my body. Uh, I really listen to what it needs. Like sometimes it needs to have the legs work out. I don't know why. I just know it. I just know I, I go do some leg presses. Some days I know I need to do biceps. Like I'm feeling weak up top. I don't know why, but I, once I get that blood going and I'm moving it, um, it goes, I don't have a specific program. I'm not one of those people in the gym, that, you know, writes it down or I just don't, I just, I, I see how I feel. And, I, and I, I know internally, I listen to that voice when it says, you know, you can do another mile or you got more in you. And I, and I follow that. I think that's really cool because what, what I'm hearing when you say those things is you're so in tune with your body and what it needs day to day, moment to moment. So you can tell if your legs feel like they need a workout right now mm -hmm. or your upper body. And that, that's a, a great level to be at that most people aren't there. They haven't taken the time to really slow down and listen to our body, but rather just react to things that are happening around us. Yeah. And I think, you know, I totally agree with you. I mean, that's a great point. And I, and I think there's another thing I want to share. I mean, there is, those are the great days that I know my body wants, right? And that's the majority, right? But there yeah. are some days my body's like, no, you're not getting off the couch or you're not getting out. And I have to tell it you're doing it. Like, I just have to tell it like you're getting on that elliptical and you're not getting off um, or you're going for a run and you don't want to, and I know you don't want to. And I, and I have those internal dialogues. Um, but I have to tell it. And I, it's interesting because a lot of people post on my thing, you know, you need a rest day and all this kind of stuff. And I, I, I don't know where I, how I feel about that. Like, I think rest is important, but there are also too many days where I have felt like I could rest and then I go run and I feel fantastic afterwards. Like I've kickstarted my body into something it didn't want to do, but the reality after pushing it is so much better. And it, the, I, I, you know, that, that's for me. So I don't want to, if people are feeling too tired to do, I don't want to get them to get people to hurt themselves, but I just know there's too many days I've suffered fatigue um, and lethargy and I've just exercised and it's gone away. Right. And one of your principles is no cheat days. I see that yeah. hashtag everywhere and all, all your followers as well. Hashtag no cheat days. So yeah. what is, I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase this. What is the least amount of exercise you'll do on a day? So let's say maybe it normally would be a cheat day for someone else, but you know, you want to get moving, but you know, do you, on those days, do you still run at least a mile or do a yeah. certain thing in the gym? Yeah. Like 15 minutes, 20 minutes is the minimum. And I think that I, what I try to do is break a sweat. And that's what I tell people break a sweat. And it takes about that long, you know, it takes about 10 minutes and I figured out ways to break it faster because I feel better if I break it faster, right. but I, I, I really try to, yesterday is a good example. I only had, yesterday I only had a little bit of time. I did a big run at night, but in the morning, I'm like, I only got 20 minutes or whatever before what I had to do. And I just did a quick elliptical and that's about, again, but uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm very blessed that way. I built a home gym. That's okay. It's not like amazing, but it's, it does the job. And I also show pictures of that. I show people like my weights are from Walmart. Uh, you know, I've got the cheapest version of the, the, the bike Peloton or the actually, you know, you can get like, not the cheapest version, but I, I know I, I, you don't need this incredible, uh, setup to get incredible results. 
Yeah. Just get moving and do it consistently. Mm. Yeah. Great. So, and what about your, I know nutrition is a big part of this too. So what are, do you have specific guidelines or principles that you follow for nutrition? I do. And it's very strict. Um, it's, and all those are found on mshope.com. Uh, there's downloadable PDFs. There's also a free cookbook. You can, and if you want to go deep, which some people do, and I encourage because it, I, I think it'll help you with your discipline, you can go to direct-ms.org. Uh, but but to break it down real quick, no dairy, no gluten, low fat, low sugar, low sodium, uh, no beans, uh, low eggs. I mean, those are kind of the, the main uh, principles of the diet. Um, and that again, 25 years ago, it was like you were living on the moon. If you talked about that, you know, people just stared right. at you. Yeah. Now it's, now it's fashionable and, you know, it's interesting. Now I've got, you know, people from my, you know, in my own life who don't have MS coming to me and saying, you know, you know what do you, you know, what do you do? How, what's that information asking for the cook, you know, taking the cookbook. Um, they, they see the results. And I think that's what we're. I mean, MS is one thing, but we're also about optimal health. And how do you find that? And what made you, I have so many questions right now, but one, one question, what made you think that, you know, this is working really well for you and you decided to share it? Like, how did that come about where you made it into A, this documentary and B, this, this community of MS Hope? Well, I'm not necessarily proud of how that happened because it came out of anger. Um, to be honest, uh, and I've tried to transition that emotion as I've gotten older. Uh, but my parents had led this mission. Uh, they, they had done it much more stronger than I had in the 90s, in the, in, uh, to the early 2000s. And to be totally honest, I, I didn't really want much to do with it. Um, I didn't necessarily believe in how maybe the approach on some level. And the, and the second thing is I want to live a normal life. I wanted to get married. I want to have family. I didn't want to be branded the MS guy, you know? And I think that selfishly, that was where I was at. And I am not proud of that. Um, but that's what my ego um, pushed me towards. And I definitely ran with that until I couldn't. And there was a number of things that happened. And, you know, it was visiting a long-term care facility that really was emotional for me. Uh, and then there was an event my parents had that, like, no, almost nobody came. Like, it was like, and I just got pissed. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say that. I got angry. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just got mad. And I just um god convicted me i i know that's how what happened i just had this energy in my body and i drove down to my parents we had this fight not a fight but we had like an argument kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, again i'm just kind of i feel good about it and then i just said look i'm doing this and that was my job i was a filmmaker i am a filmmaker and i just said look i know i know how to reach people um we're gonna try this and my brother helped me design it in a way that and we just kind of jumped. We, we made it. We, I had a goal to, to breach the world. Um, and, you know, one cool story, if you're interested, is that this is true. This is right when Google Maps is kind of starting. Okay. Yeah. And this is, the, this is the true story. And on, we figured out a way to hook up Google Maps, like the day after we launched MS Hope. Or it may have been the day. I can't remember. Was it the day or after? And we had it hooked up. And we were listening to, I was listening to like this John Tavner song. I think it was the Lord's Prayer, weirdly enough. Like it was odd. And we were listening <laughs> and we were, it's true. And we were in the office and we were watching it and we launched it. And I was watching the earth and it was spinning because it was showing me who was logging in. And I was, I get goosebumps talking about it because that's wow. what, it was unbelievable. We're like, the globe was spinning and we're going, it's going into city after city. And I'm like, holy crap. Like we just, we're hitting the world. And this was like day one. Oh my and gosh, what an incredible it was, feeling. It was, it was crazy to watch. And then we knew, I knew then that we'd done, we'd done something. And this is before the documentary. And I, I thought, wait, when this doc comes out, like yeah. if, we, if we can do this with this, like, you know. And again, I, I really wanted to be clear. I mean, I, I, I give credit to the higher power. Like I'm just a, I'm a cog in this, just a voice. Right, so that's so cool. I love that story. So, can you give us an example of just what a typical day in the life of Matt Emery looks like, mm. you know, from morning to, to evening? What, what does it look like? I mean, it's, it's, it's an intense day. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't pull punches when I talk about it. I, I try to tell people the truth. Um, I don't watch TV that much at all. I don't watch sports. I don't drink. Um, I, I'm very isolated in how I live. Um, 
to, I, I'm very edited. Um, and it's about intention uh, and purpose. And I try to, the, the moment my eyes open, I'm into prayer. And after that, I'm into getting things done. And that is about execution. I know what I've got to do and that's exercise. I know I've got to be disciplined in my diet. Um, and then I know I've got to complete what's in front of me. And so, you know, people think that, you know, I get a lot of people in my life tell me, I don't have time for this. I don't have time. And I, and I try to tell people, like, you don't, you, it's not, you, you have to make the time. And once you start making the time, your life will shift around you to facilitate it. Uh, and I know that's a big leap of faith for a lot of people, but that's just the reality. And so for me, it's a, it's a lot about getting to the gym, you know, it's about the grit. Like you got to do your laundry. You got to, you know, I've right. got two kids and I've, I've got to like, all those things got to happen. Um, and I don't have a lot of time to let off. And again, that's where the physical discipline I think comes in for people. Like once you kind of get that mindset, you know, I go, I sleep soundly though. I'll tell you that. I bet. So, and last question, have you always had that discipline or did it kick in once you got serious about, you know, six, I think you had said six weeks after your diagnosis is when all this started? Yeah. I mean, I have, I'm not going to like pretend I have been perfect my entire life. That's just not true. Um, I think that I did, I definitely ebbed and flowed. Uh, have I ever had dairy? I think I've had dairy maybe twice, like literally. Am I even joking? Wow. Yeah. In 26 years I mean, that I knew of. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's been some times with butter and stuff like that, but very, very low, but like I've had a glass of milk. No. Mm -hmm. um, um, but that, that I was very strict to, um, but you know, when after it was filming the movie and after the movie, I took it to a different level. Uh, I think I learned lessons in that too. Uh, meeting people down the road and seeing what happened if you, if you weren't mm -hmm. super on it. And I just, you know, I put the pen to the pad, so to speak. And I'm like, I, I'm, I was only 40 at the time or whatever. I'm like, I got to take this to the next level if I want to be running around at 70. Right. Well, that's all we have time for today, but I, I have so many more questions for you that I personally get from a lot of my clients with MS. So we'll definitely have you back on and I'll be able to ask you some of those questions. In the meantime, you've already mentioned a bunch of resources. How, how can people find you, find MS Hope, the best bet, diet, and all of that? Yeah, I mean, the easiest place is go to mshope.com. Um, check it out. Um, and as, as you probably know, we have, we have a, almost, a week, almost every week we do a free Zoom session as well. You can, you can talk to us. And I have my personal phone number on there. So you can call me. Like, I'm, pretty, I'm very accessible that way. And I try my best to help people and, and give them information. You're doing an amazing job at that. I love that, as I said in the beginning, that you're just so real and authentic, but also that you're not hiding anything. You know, everything that you do and that's helping you is out there for anyone to follow along with. So I love that. Thank you so much for being here with us and for creating all these resources for everyone. Well, thank you for sharing the message and good luck to your mission as well. Thank you. Thank you.